admit, today I'm not feeling the best. Energy level is very, very, very low. However, there's work to be done, results to be had. Grab the car keys, let's go. So before we get started with today's video, I wanna give a big shout out to this guy and a big shout out to this guy. So in the last video we posted about the truck, we talked about the tire issues and how they vibrate and they want to stay balanced because they might be out of round and the whole issue. So in that video, we showed some of the vibrations and this guy pointed out and he noticed that on some of those vibrations, not all of them, some of those vibrations that the RPMs will kind of jump up um, here and there. And he said that might be an issue with your torque converter, which might affect the transmission. And big shout out to this guy because he confirmed that he had the same exact issue. So I scout all over the internet, scout all over forums and all different types of sites. And one of the things that a lot of people said when they had this issue, they called it torque converter shutter or transmission shutter, that one simple thing could fix the issue. And that was simply changing your transmission fluid. Now, depending on who you ask, you're supposed to change your transmission fluid. Um, <laughs> nobody seems to know the answer. So all you experts, put in the comments below, let me know when are you actually supposed to change your transmission fluid? Because there's a wide variety of people who think that either you're supposed to change it every 40,000 miles or every 100,000 miles or every 150,000 miles. I don't know. People keep giving me these different answers. So I don't really know exactly. I don't think anybody actually knows exactly when you're supposed to change your transmission fluid. So for all intents and purposes, this is a 2015 F-150 XLT. It has 149,982,000 miles on it. Uh, only 46 or so of them were put on by me. The other 104,000 or so miles, I know my math might be off. The other 104,000 miles was put on by the previous owner. I never changed transmission fluid and I'm pretty sure they didn't change it either. All right, we got it jacked up. And I'm all about safety, safety first. I got my gloves. Jack stands. I always use jack stands no matter what, even if it won't be long, use jack stands. Also, safety. Put something behind the tire, in front of the tire, a, a chalk, a brick, something. I know that's kind of old school, but just do it. Just do it. Oh, yeah. Step one in the process is to drain the fluid, right? <laughs> so the main goal here is to not make a huge mess uh, because I can see how this could make a huge, huge mess. And I don't want that. My wife doesn't want that. HOA doesn't want that, so <laughs> let's do our best not to make a huge mess. So to combat that, we have, number one, we have a mat. Um, we have a mat. This is a quick drying mat. This soaks up any uh, water, oil, anything that uh, may come out while we're doing this process. This will soak it up. It's very large. Just set it down and also keeps you a little warm because it is a little cold today, so the concrete's a little cold, so this will help a lot. So I also bought a drain pan. And this is what show up. It's supposed to be a very large drain pan. This looks like a bedpan from a hospital. What is this? <laughs> so that's not gonna do anything. That's going back to the store. Uh, we do have our actual oil drain pan. We're gonna use that. That's a lot larger. And we're also gonna use an old paint tray that I found in the garage. And uh, so we're gonna have the mat down and hopefully all the oil goes in here. If it doesn't, it goes on there. We also got some cardboard we're gonna put down so we make sure we don't make a mess. First step is to lower this pan here. Um, it's just two bolts. You got one here and then one on the other side there. For reference, that's the front of the truck that way. So if you look up in there, it gives you access to your transmission pan, which is right here. Um, if you look there, that's your fill plug there. And I believe it is a 19 mil. Uh, we'll see when we get a little closer to it. I'm gonna have a 19 mil, so I broke it with a uh, three fourths. All right, so now I have it loose. i just spin it off now. All right, you can hear that suction when you release it. And that is your fill slash dipstick. All right, so far it doesn't look too bad. It looks uh, brown, kind of like I expected it to be. Uh, transmission fluid, of course, is red. So uh, yeah, this shows a little bit of use, but not too bad. I wanna give a big shout out to Trick Shift Garage. I saw them on YouTube. Um, he did a video where he changed his transmission fluid and what he did was he <laughs> he loosed these bolts in the back first because he said that the oil would drip that way. So he loosed the bolts in the back first, these right here. And then he tucked the aluminum foil in through here so that the aluminum foil would create it as a uh, somewhat of a funnel or a filter so that the oil would hit the aluminum foil and fall down this way right into your pan. And it basically eliminated the amount of mess that uh, this creates. So big shout out to those guys. We're gonna try that out right now. These are eight millimeter bolts. Um, they actually broke very easily. So, I mean, it's not gonna be 
it's not gonna be that hard to actually break these. So I'm just gonna loose them all on the back end here and then we'll uh, go from there. You know, there's times like this where you just kind of wish you had a lift, you know? <laughs> a lift, maybe a garage, you know, maybe a nice proper setup. One day, one day. All right, so we got our foil. We got a pad in place. We're gonna keep removing bolts till the oil starts to drip down and right into the pan. Hopefully it works out exactly like you did on their video. <laughs> All right. Well, it kind of worked. <laughs> it kind of worked. While we got that dripping out, um, I still haven't released all the rest of the bolt shit, so we're gonna just gonna kind of let it drip for a while. Um, one of the things I want to point out is this thing. So I got some really cool products here. This one is a magnetic parts tray. And I got my bolts <laughs> for my transmission just kind of sitting in there. You could just, boom, stick it up there. That's awesome, right? That's really cool. Um, so I have really cool, cool tools that you can use. If you need something like this, check out the link in the description below. So that's a quick update. It's still dripping. Um, this aluminum foil is working very well. So big shout outs to those guys. Uh, what I came out here and, and did was I, I already had all these uh, loose. I just took all the rest of these out. I just loosed these here in the front and the oil started pouring out again. So <laughs> uh, we're gonna let it drip a little bit more so we can get as much of it out as possible. Now I'm a little concerned about this pan. I'm a little confused as well. Um, if you look at this construction pan, the back is flat where we're, the oil is dripping out of. The front has this this uh, section here. So it leads me to believe that there's oil just sitting here that has not you know come out the back yet. And in this section as well. And also, wow, also very loose. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be really careful when we take these front bolts out and when we lower this whole pan. That's the last thing we want is the remaining oil to just come pouring out and end up down here on the driveway. <laughs> update of what we got we got the pan out there's our pan with our filter um that is part of the mess we made <laughs> uh, so it's still it's done it's still dripping slightly I made somewhat of a mess in the driveway um not too bad i want to get some uh we're gonna get some dirt dirt soaks up oil very well so i'm gonna find some dirt and soak it up real quick so this is the inside of our pan here. We need to clean it up. Um, and before we put it back on, we need to clean it up. Now this is our filter that came off. I see it has this little orange rubber piece. It fits up into the transmission and it kind of just fell out when we took the pan off. And it's our gasket, it is metal on the outside. It has like a little rubber piece on the inside. Um, this is our new filter. It is not a Motorcraft Ford part, but <clears throat> I got it off of Amazon and it is exactly the same. Um, it has this metal piece on the outside and it's plastic on the inside. This one is the same. If you can see there, it is also metal. Um, it's just uh, oil that's covering it, so you can't tell. Uh, we need to clean this up, like I said. Um, and I've seen people talk about these metal shavings that come off of these uh, magnets. And there is quite a bit of gunk there. Um, not bad enough to be worried about, I'm guessing. So we're, like I said, we're gonna just clean it up. Now, have you never seen the inside, at least the underside of a transmission? And I'm not gonna lie to you, I haven't either. That's what it looks like. It still has oil dripping off ever so slowly. You wanna just leave it there and let it drip. All right, so we cleaned up the edge around here with a shot rag. I also need to clean where our filter goes, which is right up in there, that hole right there. Kind of just take a shot rag and clean around in there. All right, just a little transmission fluid coming out. So your filter, when you put it back in, goes right back up in there and you just kind of push up on it and it just kind of hangs. All right, 
Make sure it's in there all the way. I must say it's weird that the filter just hangs like that. Uh, it doesn't give you the best confidence. It makes you feel like it's gonna fall out, but that's the only way to put the filter back in. That's the only way it was in there in the first place. Uh, the pan should reinforce it a little bit, but I said it just kind of sits up in there like that. So make sure that you don't put any extra dirt on the bottom of the pan, bottom of your filter, just from uh, your hand, because I did, I had to go back and wipe it down. So be careful. Uh, also, also keep in mind that there's only one way the filter can go in there. So um, you can't mess it up. I mean, if you put, you see the filter on backwards, it won't fit and you won't be able to put the pan on. So you'll just flip it around. All right, so we're putting our pan back on there. I did a uh, bolt here and a bolt on the other side, kind of even it out. And we'll just go across and we'll go there, 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 and just you know, to kind of do it across the whole way till we get them on on. Now, the torque specs is for this is just 80 foot pounds of torque, which I saw in somebody's YouTube video. 80 foot pounds of torque, and then you're good to go. For our fill, we have Mercon by Motocraft uh, LV for low viscosity. Now, if you look at your lipstick, it says here, whoop, use only Mercon LV. This is what we got. So, <clears throat> To do that, we have a pump on Amazon. Uh, yeah, it's a pump. <laughs> there are no instructions in this box whatsoever. I should just love when they do that. So I actually had to go to Amazon and figure out how to use this thing. So uh, it's a manual pump. Uh, we came with the cap there. This is actually the tool used to open and close the cap. So I guess so it's tight and pressurized. Um, it has a gauge on the front, which is kind of cool when you pump. Um, it has a nozzle here so you can control stopping the flow. It also came with all these adapters, which I'm not really sure exactly what they're for. This one is supposed to be for Ford. It says ATF 101, and according to Amazon, that's the one that is for Ford uh, right there, which like I gotta say, I'm not really sure what that, how that would help me. So anyway, I'm probably gonna use this one with the way it's set up because we don't have that much space. And I have to get down on the ground to use this. So I'm not really sure how much the truck is gonna take, but we're gonna use, uh, it says this one is five quarts, right? Which is a gallon and a quarter, gallon and a quarter. This is a five gallon container. Um, there's no way for me to really gauge how much that really is that came out, especially with the aluminum foil in there. <laughs> I would say it's probably about two gallons maybe and then you got a little bit over here as well so we're gonna try to fill it up and um and see where see how much it takes first of all like, i don't want to overfill it is, is the issue um and then you're supposed to check it first and then check it again with the truck running after you cycle through the gears uh, several times and then you check it again and see uh, how much is actually in there so like i said i don't want to overfill it so we're just going to start light and probably just do i'll say one of these, I guess, I don't know. All right, <clears throat> figured why not check the manual. All right, automatic transmission fluid check. If required, have an authorized dealer and check and change the transmission fluid at the correct, okay. All right, that dude, that didn't help me much. Automatic transmission does not have a transmission fluid dipstick. Huh? Okay, uh, refer to schedule maintenance. Your transmission does not consume fluid. However, if the transmission slips, slip slowly or you notice a fluid leak, contact an authorized dealer. Do not use supplements, additives, cleaning agents. The use of these materials may all. That's it? <laughs> okay. That's it? That's all they're gonna say. They're not gonna say, why the big secret? Why, what is this? What is the thing with Ford? Like, they don't want you touching your transmission. They don't want you changing your transmission. Or they want you to do a fluid flush, which you probably shouldn't do a fluid flush, which is what people keep saying. And now they won't tell you how much you're supposed to put in, what it's supposed to read. What? Why the big secret? So of course I went to Google. <laughs> how many quarts of transmission fluid does a 2015 F-150 take? Fill capacity of 13 quarts or 12 liters. However, due to the transmission design, only about six or seven quarts will drain from the transmission, which makes a lot of sense. So this is five quarts. And it says only about six or seven quarts will drain from the transmission. Which leads me back all the way back over here to that. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put 
We're gonna put five quarts back in. We're just gonna put five quarts back in to start off with. And then we're gonna check it and see where it is. Um, I've seen people fill it to where it pretty much overflows out. And then when they run through the gears, you know, the transmission fluid gets, you know, in all the other places of the transmission and then they have to add more. So we're gonna just do five and see where we're at. And I'm pretty sure it's gonna take all of this. So let's see what happens. I was filling it up. Um, I haven't even gotten to, haven't even finished the five quarts. This is not the five quarts. It's probably like four and a half maybe that's in there, I would guess. And it started overflowing. So yeah, <laughs> we're gonna stop there obviously. And then uh, we're gonna put the field cap back in and then we're gonna start it up and run through the cycles of the uh, gears and then see where we're at. Yeah. I just screwed up. I, yeah, I just screwed up. So I tightened all the bolts and I over tightened one of them. Look there. That one stripped through there. And now we're leaking here. I screwed up. I, yeah. I, all right. I ain't know where to go from here. I don't, I don't know where to go from here. <laughs> um, I can find another boat, see if I can run the boat through the bottom and push the rest of the other boat out. I'm trying to get it out with pliers, I don't know. I really don't know what I can do here. Um, 